Where can you imagine an explosion happening in a laboratory? Maybe a Bunsen burner with its open flame connected to a gas line, or maybe an autoclave with super high pressure and temperature, or maybe a refrigerator with, wait, a refrigerator? What? Hi, I'm Susanna Harris, and this is the Science of Lab Safety, brought to you by Lab Safety Specialists. We already know that there are certain rules we're supposed to follow when we're working in a science laboratory, but what we might not know is exactly why those rules exist. So let's explore the exciting, the unexpected, and even the scary facts behind the science of lab safety. If you've ever had the pleasure of ordering a new fridge for your laboratory, you might have wondered why you can't just go to your local hardware store. I mean, you're just getting a big cold box for you to keep closed bottles in, basically at the same temperature as milk, right? See, your refrigerator isn't just a big cold box. It's actually a big cold electric box. There's a bunch of wires and switches on the inside that help to turn on the lights and keep the pressure. Now, if we want to know why this is important, we have to understand something called flashpoint. The flashpoint is the lowest temperature at which a volatile substance evaporates to form an ignitable mixture with air in the presence of an igneous source and continues burning after the trigger source is removed. So let's break that down. Flashpoint is a temperature, and specifically it's the lowest temperature at which a chemical can evaporate into the air and build up until you can ignite it with just a small flame or even a spark. And here's the thing, once it's been ignited, this gas will continue to burn and can even cause an explosion. You see, closed bottles of chemicals might not actually be closed. Even if we try our hardest to close them by hand, there are still often spaces for the gas to escape out of those bottles and into the general space of the refrigerator. You've probably actually experienced this in your own home. We've all gone to our refrigerator and noticed that there's a bad smell coming from somewhere, even though no food is open. You might look around your refrigerator and, and notice that there's some jar that up close might be the smell, and then you open it. Oh, yep. That's it. So even though this jar was closed, there was still gas and smell seeping out of it. Now you can imagine if that gas wasn't just a bad smell and rather was flammable, a tiny spark could set off the whole thing and boom, cause an explosion. Different chemicals have different flashpoints. For example, gasoline has a flash point of negative 43 degrees Celsius, which is negative 45 degrees Fahrenheit. This is why you should never have an open flame when you're going to put gas in your car. So how can we use this information to keep ourselves safe? If you've ever worked in a lab, you might have seen some labels on refrigerators that say not safe for flammables. In this case, we have to be very careful to check the labels on our bottles to see if there are any warning signs about being flammable. But let's say you do have chemicals that have to be stored at lower than room temperature. Then you're going to have to buy a refrigerator that is specifically designed to store those chemicals. These refrigerators are a little bit different than those at home because they actually have all of those electric components and wires on the outside. And that way, if there is a spark for any reason, your fridge isn't going to blow up. So a bit more expensive on the front side, but definitely cheaper than a lab explosion. One of the difficult things about working in a lab is remembering that those simple and sometimes silly sounding rules are actually there to keep us safe. So even though we don't have to worry about a jar of mystery something in our refrigerator, we do want to remember that a small bottle of chemicals in the wrong fridge can be an explosion waiting to happen. 